In front of you are two cars. One has a matte PPF wrap and one has a black PPF wrap. The question is, which do you think looks like it has a deeper, darker, richer color? It's pretty obvious, right? It's the one with the glossy coating. And that's why I've been so excited to check this out, the ASUS XG32 UCWG. And it's faster, 240Hz brother, the XG32 UCWMG. Horrible naming scheme aside, these are the first ever WOLED True Black monitors that have a glossy coating. Even though these are current gen panels that we've already seen before, 4K 32 inch OLEDs that we find in other LG and ASUS and a bunch of other brands products, it's the first time it has been shiny. And I want to know where someone who's avoided buying this panel because of the matte coating until maybe now, was the wait actually worth it and was the upgrade as good as hyped and promised? Of course, a glossy coating on a monitor has its disadvantages. If you have bright light sources in your room, things will get reflected on your screen and can be quite distracting. But if you're not using your monitor in front of a window that doesn't have curtains on it, then it is absolutely much, much better than an OLED with a matte coating. As far as I'm aware, this panel is basically the same as what you get in the ASUS PG32 UCDP. So I'm not actually going to rehash too much of the details, so you should check out my review on that monitor if you want to know what I feel about the small intricacies of this panel. The only difference between this panel and that is the glossy coating, and the fact that it's a bit slow at 165Hz with a dual mode 330Hz. But you can also get this monitor with that faster 240Hz refresh rate if you pay a little bit more for the UCWMG. So on all fronts, it's kind of basically equal with the only change being the glossy coating. So let's just focus on that. Compared to the same panel with matte coatings, this has much better contrast, has a sharper looking display that seems to provide more detail and clarity. And even in game, the colors are a bit more saturated. They look a little bit more punchy and motion blur just seems a little easier to register in my eyes because of this glossy coating. And while to some who have not experienced this in real life, it might sound like I'm waffling. They are the same screen with a different finish. But as I mentioned and demonstrated in the paint on a car example earlier, the coating makes all the difference. And that's because with matte coatings, they're designed to diffuse light, which is great for preventing reflections from being too distracting in your room. But just because they diffuse light from outside the monitor doesn't mean they don't diffuse light from the monitor itself as well. And that results in the display's light kind of getting muddled together and diffused together, the bright spots blending in a little to the dark spots. Whereas with a glossy coating piece of glass, it's designed to be as transparent as possible to restrict as little of the light coming from the monitor itself from reaching your eyes in its true undiluted state. And that means the dark pixels of OLED stay dark and the bright pixels of OLED stay bright because they're not getting diffused and mixed in together like they've been thrown in a blender, which is kind of what matte coatings do. To put into perspective how much clearer and crisper this panel looks with this glossy coating, on the OG PG32 UCDP, I set window scaling at about 125% or 150%. For if I set it at a normal 100%, the text would look too muddled that I just wouldn't be able to read things and type things easily. On this panel, it's an effortless 100% and everything still looks clear enough that even though it's very small, I can still deal with it, giving me much more screen real estate. But how about the monitor itself? Well, fundamentally, it's still the same panel as something like the PG32 UCDP, just that this particular model is slower at 165Hz in 4K and 330Hz in 1080p. So everything I said about the colors, the detail, and the contrast that I enjoyed about the PG32 UCDP, which if you haven't seen my review, go check it out right now, completely applies here, just enhanced. And as always, I love the dual mode functionality. 165Hz at 4K is definitely going to be enough for most people to do single player gaming and if you want to hop on an esports game where you want a higher refresh rate like Apex Legends, Marvel Rivals, Overwatch and Valorant, you can just pop it in 1080p mode and live with that lower resolution since these esports games look like crap anyway. Running it at 330Hz is much more important than running it at 4K at a lower refresh rate and this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. High res for casual gaming or multimedia or work and low res but fast for esports competitiveness. So then that leads me to the question 
question, should you get a glossy WOLED panel or a glossy QD OLED panel now that both are shiny and on the even playing field? I think that just boils down to personal preference. If you're in a room with quite a lot of ambient light, you should definitely get the WOLED panel since it doesn't wash out and have all the blacks turn grey the moment there is light shining on the screen, even with the glossy coating. Whereas that is definitely an issue still with current gen QD OLEDs. On top of that, I think text clarity on WOLED is still better than the QD OLEDs. So if you're working with a lot of text or a lot of small details, I probably would suggest getting a W OLED. Now, if you're someone that wants more saturation and more extreme colors, uh, definitely go for QD OLED. W OLED looks a little bit more natural, uh, whereas the QD OLEDs definitely have the ability to turn that saturation and turn that punchiness up a notch that really nothing else can quite touch right now, which is great if you are playing Cyberpunk and you want it to look really, really extreme. However, if you're color grading, it uh, turns out QD OLED is actually better. According to tests by people like R Tings and Monitors Unbox, the Delta E and color accuracy that QD OLED can achieve seems to be better than what W OLED can achieve. So if you're planning to calibrate your monitor and then use it for color accurate work like design, QD OLED is probably a better option. But still, W OLED is plenty accurate enough for it to be a good choice for color grading, especially if you're just publishing to YouTube or web like I am. But I think for the average user who doesn't need perfect color accuracy, W OLED is still going to look absolutely amazing. And the handling of ambient light is a significant advantage in more situations for more average users. And the fact that W OLED has dual mode functionality, whereas QD OLED still doesn't. Either way, if you get a glossy QD OLED or W OLED, I highly doubt you'll regret it. They're both going to look absolutely amazing, especially compared to their matte coating counterparts. And really the only people who are going to be regretting their purchase decision right about now are the people who bought the matte versions of these panels. And if you're deciding between the 165Hz version of this panel that runs at 330Hz in 1080p or the 240Hz version of this panel that runs at 480Hz at 1080p, I personally think for most average gamers, uh, the slower and cheaper version at 165Hz, which is what we have here today, is probably enough. Unless you are very, very intense on your esports gaming still when you want peak esports performance, the extra 150 hertz on the 480 version is really not going to be worth the money.